Well, how's it going, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Today's episode is one that I'm very, very excited about because it is an experience that I don't think many people in their lives have ever had the chance to experience, especially fishermen that live in the southern regions in the states like Texas that I live in, and that is a swim bait catching a big smallmouth bass. So rewind to a few weeks back, I was fishing with my Elite Series buddy, Alton Jones Jr. You guys probably know him by now. And we caught about 20, I believe it was 22 or 21 pounds of largemouth. And then I had a giant, giant smallmouth, as you guys saw from the title, eat an eight inch gizzard shad glide bait. Now this bait right here is made by Piz Customs, not sponsored by this company. It's a, they, they make awesome, awesome custom swim baits. My dad, my dad actually got this one made to imitate a Texas gizzard shad. And so we're, we go out there with the intent to throw giant swim baits, as you guys may have seen from that video. And they weren't biting the swim baits, so we went to the jerk baits, caught a bunch of big largemouth on jerk baits, and all of a sudden, on just a random main lake point, I caught a big smallmouth, as you guys will see in the clip, on a giant glide bait. And so it was a very cool experience for me because not only do I not catch many smallmouth in Texas at all, but I've never caught one on a glide bait. Now I've caught plenty of smallmouth on tiny swim baits and, and you know Kitex and finesse swim baits, but I've never caught one on a glide bait. And so I kind of wanted to show you guys the clip of me catching the fish and then kind of talking to one of my swim bait guru buddies, Oliver Nye. You guys probably know his channel as well, Big Bass Dreams. He's been around the fishing industry for a long, long time. His PB is something like 17 and a half pounds on a swim bait. So Oliver knows quite a few things about it. So I kind of want to pick his brain and hear his thoughts behind like why a smallmouth would eat a bait this big, whether it's eating it or just attacking it out of, you know, predatory uh, instincts, that kind of stuff. And so without further ado, here is the clip. Make sure you guys stay afterwards to hear Oliver talk about swim baits because it is truly an awesome conversation that I have with him, kind of talking about the predatory aspects of smallmouth bass. Let's get started. I wonder if it was less, less distinct islands and cuts like it is now. <clears throat> I mean, if water eroded any of that? I doubt it. Yeah. I mean, it's not there's not enough flow through here to really... That's no, true, yeah. Got him. Digging. Digging. No, not a digging. Got a swim bait, though. Almost. Almost. What? Small mouth? Small mouth. No way. Big small mouth. I got a big smallie on the glide bait. Oh. I was like, I ain't gonna jinx uh, you. Oh man, you're coming to the boat. You're coming to the boat, big boy. You just got a horse fish on my glide bait. What am I doing? Yes! Yeah! Wow. Nice, dude. Big in. That's going in our limit. Heck yeah. That's a two, two and a half. Yeah. Chuggy, look nice. at that. On the glide bait, dude, he knocked it. Let me get a picture of this. Absolutely knocked it. Get in the nice sunlight there. Get a better picture. It's a good angle. Face Sick. is a little like dark from here up, but it's I can fix fish that. Pops good. Let me see it. I was just doing all my story. Nice. Sa save yeah, it? save it. Dude, that's sick. That's a good smallie. I'm gonna stick him in the live well <clears throat> for the picture. And I was recording everything. I have not caught. I'm gonna sound dumb when it's like a two pound large mouth. <laughs> but I was like, that almost. I have not caught a small mouth this year for sure. And I've not caught one on a glide bait ever. So. Dude, I don't know many people have caught one. I've caught one on a wooden rack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's rare right there. Dude, he absolutely ate it with everything he had. You were like big, and I was like, I don't see him. Yeah. You know, you should see him. Well, by the way he was fighting, yeah, he was, he seemed like a biggin. So now that we are here, let us sit down and talk to Mr. Oliver Nye. Hopefully he answers here. Apologies if you can't hear me, it's windy and I'm on speakerphone, but we'll see if he answers. Mr. Anderson. Hello, Mr. Nye, how you doing? Doing all right, what's up, man? Good to talk to you. So I thought that I'd call and just kind of address smallmouth on swim baits. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I think it's absurd. There's no way anything like that should be in existence. Yes. Now, I'm sure you saw my Instagram photo, did you not? I might have. My favorite Instagram live posts. No, no, no. The one where I caught the smallmouth on the glide bait. Oh, that wasn't, um, that wasn't like photoshopped or CGI'd or No, you, you, you know that I'm not magic. about the Photoshop life. <laughs> No, I did, man. Uh, that was a really nice specimen on 
Uh, definitely a big bait. What is that? No, no, was it Piss Shadley? Yeah, Piss Shadley. So I kind of wanted to call. Now, Oliver, if you guys don't know at home, I'm recording a video right now, Oliver. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, he's, I, I would call him a swim bait expert. I, I hope you would self proclaim yourself that. But uh, what's, your Never P will. what's your PB again? Uh, what species? Crappie? Uh, no, not your crappie, but your bass. <laughs> Which species is a bass? Uh, largemouth. Uh, let's see, that would be 17 pounds, 7 ounce here. And you caught that on a swim bait, correct? I sure did. He sure did. So he's caught a 17 pounder. I can't even in my wildest dreams imagine catching a 17 pounder, but he's done that. And so he knows quite a few things about swim baits. He kind of brought the whole swim bait craze to Austin, or I guess joined it in a major way, way back in the day. And uh, so I just kind of wanted to call Oliver and get his, uh, his thoughts about why a smallmouth would eat a swim bait. So do you have anything kind of to start with, Oliver? Yeah, you know, to, to begin with, all predatory fish tend to be drawn to big prey items, whether that's large mouth, small mouth, uh, muskies, brown trout, or as you've seen recently, crappie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so the power of a big bait slash swim bait um, is pretty much universal across multi species and across the country or region. You know, it doesn't matter if you're largemouth fishing or even smallmouth fishing or if you're on the West Coast or in Texas or in the Midwest or in the Great Lakes. There's definitely an application for it. Exactly. Now, do you think the smallmouth that I caught about a three-pounder, is any part of its forage a six to ten-inch gizzard shad? You know, uh, with the smallmouth in particular, I think there's a lot of other factors that make them strike a swim bait besides just like a feeding response. Yeah. Um, you know, we've caught some pretty small smallmouths on some pretty good sized baits. Gotcha. And, you know, they're just an aggro fish. Yeah, I don't know if you have any uh, experience with uh, keeping these things in an aquarium or observing them in an aquarium. Yeah. But, you know, they're, they're kind of the alphas and they kind of punk other fish. That's true. <laughs> so, a lot of times, I think they're striking these bigger baits out of, you know, territorial or just straight aggression, you know, uh, motives, rather than hunger. That's true. And that's why you hook them a lot of the times outside the mouth, the top of the head, side of the face, because you're coming up and ramming it. That's true. Is it more like a territorial type thing? I think that's the case more often than not with the, sw uh, with the small mouths. Especially once you get further north, like you did uh, in Minnesota, where yeah. their like their heads are tiny, but their bodies just get really tall and deep and wide. Like, I mean, I've caught them on the eight-inch mag draft, which is a pretty good-sized bait. Yeah, that's that's um, pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, but you know, they, they, I've also been bit on ten-inch and eleven-inch baits and never got a hook in them because they're not eating it. That's true. Now, of course, when you when we're talking like small swim baits, like the, the size of forage that smallmouth actually eat, they eat those things up, right? Like the the three inch and four inch little uh, spark shad, stuff like that. Oh, that stuff's not even fair. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, you know that, and even the five inch spark shad on a mega bass uh, body balance head, you know, by the time you put the head on the bait, you're looking at five and a half, almost six inches in, in length and profile. Yeah. Like that's not a small bait for a smallmouth. And that draws some really good bites for us. Exactly. They're it. Like they're choking it. Like we've we've had them choke eight inch mag drafts. Like literally gone. Yeah, so so in that sense, could it be possibly a feeding response? But then like once it gets up into like the eight to ten inch baits that it's a little bit harder for them to eat that and they're just kinda of going for aggression. Yeah, you know, there, there's just gonna be it's gonna come down to the situation. Yeah. But yes and no. Yes and no. Now, what is your your biggest smallmouth on a on a big swim bait? I'd say like one eight inches or larger. Uh, fives. I've caught a few fives doing it. And which which swim bait was that on? Uh, the mag draft and the ice slide one eighty five. Nice. Was that up in Minnesota? Uh, Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Nice, nice. And I might have got a couple out in New York. In New York. Yeah. Oh, that's. Let go, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, yep. dope. Yeah, yeah. So I just thought I'd give you a call and kind of hear your, your thoughts behind smallmouth and swim baits. It was definitely my first uh, experience of catching one on a, I mean, I've caught them on the small swim baits, like I mentioned, but nothing on a glide bait before. And so it not only surprised me, but just kind of piqued my interest as to like the, the mindset behind a smallmouth, especially in Texas, where smallmouth don't get that big besides, you know, the border of Oklahoma. And, uh, and to find one on a swim bait was pretty cool. It's always cool. It is, no doubt. Well, everybody, if you haven't checked out Oliver's YouTube channel, you guys should check it out below. And uh, I see we get back to talking about swim baits the rest of the video. Thanks, Oliver. You're welcome, buddy. Keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Looking forward to the next Tide Pod Challenge. <laughs> there, there won't be a Tide Pod Challenge. But... Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not that dumb. Well, all right, brother. If I don't see you, have fun on your tour and uh, keep, the, keep the good stuff coming. I will I see you. See a bigger smallmouth on a bigger bait. You know what? That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bud. Good see luck. you, bud. Bye. What a dude, he's a nice guy. Well, everybody, that is the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know I definitely had a blast talking to Oliver kind of about not just swim baits, but the smallmouth aspect of it and kind of hearing how they attack baits based on predatory instincts and basically how they're always angry. I mean, smallmouth, every smallmouth I've ever caught, whether it's in Minnesota or Texas, has always been a very, very angry fish. Uh, and so it's super cool to be able to catch one on a swim bait like this. And if you guys haven't subscribed yet to Tyler's Real Fishing, this channel that you're watching right now, make sure you guys click the subscribe button down below and click the notification button as well. We are oh, oh so close to 100,000 subscribers. It's been a dream of mine to get there for a long time and hopefully this video can push us over the edge. Of course, anything you guys wanna purchase from rods, reels, to the bait like this, I guarantee you they're like four or five months back ordered, but everything you wanna order is down below in the description as always. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of Tyler's Real Fishing.